Steve, as we're running out of time, we head to the Fortress of Solitude where Wonder Woman is on the screen for Dragon going up against Catwoman for Samee. That's very interesting. Wonder Woman recently received a, a few buffs. I'm sure you're very familiar with those buffs, Katana Prime being, a, I guess, a co-Wonder Woman main here. Uh, she's great at keeping you out. You disappear. And Dragon knows at any level you play to win. But at the highest level, that battle starts at the character select screen. Wonder Woman players in general consensus is that she does well against Catwoman. Her character, Dragon has struggled against, you know, and is online practicing and dealing with Samiz as a player in general. So, trying to play the counterpick game as is with the space control that Diana provides, that long lasso rope, huge range on her jump attacks, and that's Extremely fast shield bash. The exactly. shield bash is so good. Very under underappreciated uh, mechanic in this game or, or tool. I feel like a lot of people forget about it. And, and uh, let's let's talk about the walk speed of Wonder Woman. You can just see Dragon moving back and forth. And there it is. The wake up there recovers in time. So Mish keeping the pressure on, canceling into the trait, keeping himself safe. And Dragon again with that bash, looking to press buttons afterwards, but it is Samish with the meter burn back three, absorbing the hit, using the armor, and getting a full combo. And look at that whiff punish there. Samish takes that first bar, backs up a little bit, gets Dragon to poke out, and then punishes him for it. All right, look at the patience from both men. That whip trip at max range, just about safe. However, Wonder Woman can challenge with the shield bats if she like, and there it is, Dragon working his way in. Nice back dash, trait. Plus the meter burn to keep Wonder Woman at advantage. And Samish able to continue his offense now. Back to the spaces. We talked about this. Dragon looking to not deal with any of the nonsense up close, but great bait on the poke from Samish. There's a neutral jump. Samish is a complete control right here. Finishing his combo. Very, very normal play right here. I feel like Dragon needs to do a little bit more homework with this Wonder Woman. It's not doing what he expected it to do. And I, I feel like he needs to throw more shields. Play a little bit more offensive, uh, defensively, but here we go. Dragon getting something going. Can he make this comeback? Yeah, still in the first game, still very early. We've seen a lot of pixel moments so far this weekend. Dragon, no stranger to the clutch moments as he's coming off of that classic match with Theo last week at Viennality. He knows a thing or two about the pixel. However, Samij is not Theo and denies any chance of a comeback going up the first game. And look at Dragon going straight into rematch. Totally comfortable, totally confident that his Wonder Woman could do something. Maybe he just remembered something at the end of the match. We don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Dragon's the poise, one of his strongest assets, knowing that it is a three-game journey and not one. It's okay to be down, no big deal, as he gathers himself to reset the position. But Sabine's picking up right where he left off. Corner combo of the meterless variety, 340 damage and supreme oppression. Look at this lockdown pressure in the corner. I mean, and this is all started because of that interactable that Dragon desperately went for. There are answers to them. Don't just sit there and complain. And Samij backing off, waiting for his time. Dragon goes for the interactable and recovers just in time. Yeah, great reaction there. Every the block successfully dashing in. Here's the chip damage on that whip. Samij back in control. Dragon back to the wall, but decent amount of space to get things going. Should he choose a pushy offensive? There it is, that shield bash after the meter burn, leaving Wonder Woman at plus two and enough space. And wow, uncharacteristic there from Dragon allows Samish to whip an entire string in his face without a challenge. Well, that's the thing when you're in a character that you're not comfortable with. You, you usually second guess yourself. You second guess those buttons and that spacing and Samij connecting, going right through the anti-air. Yeah, great hitbox on that down two from Wonder Woman and their lasso attack. No so boy. much range. However, a little nice late to the gun is Dragon and Samish gets the jump in and he is working on a dominating second game here. Over 50% left on his first health bar. All right, and the meter burn back three, the universal tool that's available to every character. Dragon using it so perfectly here. Nothing new there. All right. Playing the patient game now, Samish trying to bait out something a little too far for the punish in that situation on the whip trip. Traits up, dashes in, just trading normals now, blocking everywhere, and the lasso grab. Great blocks here by Dragon, great patience, waiting for Samish to open himself up, waiting and picking his time, picking uh, where he can challenge those gaps. All right, and there's the blessing from the gods for Wonder Woman, where she receives one of five randomized buffs. The Artemis giving her a more damage boost to her braces should she parry an attack. However, Samij, you can't parry what hits <laughs> no, and the offense can't. a little too strong. Samij up two games to zero.
as Dragon goes back Fighters to his tried and true Aquaman, the character that helped him win Evolution. Yeah, and then this is his last pick. Uh, for those of you who don't know, when you're playing in a tournament setting uh, in Injustice during the Begin. Pro Series, uh, you can only change characters if you lose a match. So right here, Dragon is stuck with this character for the duration of this set. Yeah, and a little bit of home fill event in here as we are in Atlantis in the throne room. The first hit to try to rush is active. It won't be the last for sure. And Samiz, very smart stuff there. Hit confirming on the first part of the string going into the cat dash to disallow any trait summon from Aquaman where he could slip out of that combo. Yeah, very smart. Matchup specific tech right there. Those of you who do play Catwoman, consider that whenever you play Aquaman. Yeah, Dragon needs to dig down and find the rest of everything in his game plan. There's a bit of a mental thing when it comes to playing against Samiz. If you remember, at EVO, the moment Samiz lost, Dragon tweeted out that he was winning the tournament. Not afraid of anybody left, but Samiz. And me. here he is now, up two games to zero on Dragon in a what could have been making it happen here at Summer Jam. And Samiz strikes first, eliminating his first health bar, one round away from a swift 3-0 and a trip to the winner's final. Right, and the down one catches Catwoman as an anti-air. I think she was trying to jump right there. And the beautiful whip punish there. And the great use of the trait by Dragon to kind of clean that up. Now, for those of you who don't know, what Aquaman's trait does, it gets him out of combos as long as his feet are still on the ground. And even better points from Dragon there. Could have easily been big time trouble. However, just slipped out, blocked, waited for his opportunity. And here's that Trident Rush once again, chipping away at the health of Samiz. Great recognition on the stagger string from Dragon. That quick six frame down poke from Aquaman. Oh, and look at that, the spacing. Just perfectly whiff punishing Samiz there. That forward two is still great. This character is still amazing. As long as you have the fundamentals, and the reactions, you can really go far. Talking about fundamentals this and reactions there. Great spacing on that meter burn back three attempt from Dragon, forcing the whiff, an easy punish. And Samish is now off of his clash. Any damage is just gonna be free to Dragon should he complete the combos. And Samish, very good block confirm there. Seeing that it blocked and, and dashing out of danger, getting away from Aquaman. Right, more trying to rush Dragon, still poised, not trying to force his way in. No errant jumps or dashes or button thrown. One step at a time. Chases are down as we get towards the corner. Whew. Ready to yield? I can't be tamed. Mm, okay, Selena, talk to me. I definitely don't think Samish is going to be tamed here. It looks like this set is all his. All he needs is one more good hit on Dragon, and he's going to be sending him to lose. Yeah, wait a minute, let's not get carried away just yet. Dragon with the combo now. Samiz has to fight with it, jumps over, looking for chip damage in this position now. Plus strings, Dragon with the challenge now. Try to rush, yes, meter burn. One combo will get the job done on either end. However, Dragon has no meter, forced to deal with this meaty situation, and Samiz misses. And of course, the meter burn back three. Samiz closing it out, 3-0 over Dragon. He will be a pass guard as well. Madsen fighting his way through the brackets on the bottom. Illusions in that same group who is also in this top eight. Then you have Gross, Nubcakes. It's gonna be a scramble for those last few spots, and Scar looking to keep his destiny in his own hands and solidify his spot even further here. Going up against Sonic, like you said, guaranteed at least fifth. Yep. But man, the point values grow so much the closer you get to first place. That's yeah, definitely a big scramble here. Everyone wants those points. Everyone wants to qualify. And here we go, Scar and Sonic Fox going toe to toe. And a beautiful whiff punish there. Back threes him. And now he's in the corner. This is the, the roulette table here. Where's the mix up going to be? Where's Supergirl going to leave you? On the Music ground. Now, unblockable, interactable. Here's the skull. I don't know if Captain Cold came for the exhibit, but he got a. Walk-in tour, either way it goes. Kara slowing down. There's the wall, pushes him out. And Sonic Fox with that level two active, ready to place that snow globe on the screen and kind of rock her world. But Scar disallowing any movement as he continues this onslaught into the corner. We go for the drop. A huge drop there. And unfortunately, Scar used all his, uh, it looked like he was relying on that trade to do the chipping out. And he was hoping, betting the bank, that that was going to work, that that was going to be enough to chip Sonic Fox out. And Sonic Fox turns it around. Let's see how far he can take this pixel. situation now. Supergirl has access to her eye laser traits, which are extremely fast and right on cue. Of course, Scar wasting no time <laughs> to get that magic pixel out of there. But in a terrible position, back to the wall with the level two trait active. Oh, a nice challenge. 
dashes towards the corner. Sonic Fox with the trade shot, trying to keep Star down, and there's a level two. The Snow Globe is active. Supergirl is going to be stuck in. Meter Burn rolls out, but comboed right back into it. And this is going to equal in a freeze. Charges up level two for the sake of letting go of the damage is Sonic Fox. And Scar reacting to the mix ups here quite well. Oh, Scar trying to go anywhere. You don't want to backdash in the corner. You have nowhere to go. And that was the extremely dirty stuff. That death sickle, that ice block coming from the skies is an overhead attack. Sonic Fox mixes it up using Captain Cole's down light attack, which is a low, having to switch between low overhead and low blocking once again back and forth. Sonic Fox with the mix up, and this is going to be enough to get the job done. And that is it. In that snow globe, you do slow down. Uh, all your moves slow down, and there's just so much more combo potential for Captain Cold. Not only that, the long if you stay in that globe in a long enough time, you will freeze, and that's a free trait uh, recharge for Sonic Fox and a free combo. And here we go, Scar starting it off great, getting hit by that wake-up wall. Wow, and a great conversion. Just the tip of the wall enough to keep Supergirl's gravity very low. 450 damage into the snow globe setup, and he's just going to stand in there and charge up in protection. And great jump there by Scar at the end, knowing that he just needed to get out of the snuggle for one second in order not to freeze, but it just wasn't enough. Sonic Fox the totally Iceman. content with taking that. Yeah, another part of the trade, if you notice, as Captain Cold's gun reaches higher levels, his projectiles do also become faster. So those straight shots, not quite the same reaction. You have to hold on just a little bit more and into the setup. What's it going to be? Shot to the face, crosses up very Dirty. My man, you are frozen and you will not leave this area. Here's the death sickle setup, and Scar's in big time trouble here in the second game. And, and great use there by Sonic Fox with a back three to back three, leaving it unclashable. Looking for just that one straight hit. Scar looking really bad right now. And here's the snow globe. It's going to snow a uh, slow, excuse me. Car right down. Scar with no option but to try to jump away in an easy anti air reaction as Sonic Fox builds the wall and puts a damper on Scar's advancement, now down old games to two. I want to see someone put a damper on that cool. smile there. I want to see Sonic Fox fall. Yeah, that'd be nice. He's just, he, this. I mean, you really can't blame him. He's really put in the work with this character, really showing every, everyone that, everyone who's doubted Super this character girl. that there's so much potential Fires here. You just Metropolis. really got to know how to, how to lab it up. You really got to know certain situations, and you have to know the rest of the cast's um, options when they're in that snow globe. You know, how to keep someone in. What's somebody's reaction when they're in the snow globe? Are they going to roll out? Are they going to backdash out? And Scar getting that first hit and awarded that juicy meter. We're taking his time now. His Sonic Fox charging up that trade piece by piece. He's going to eat a laser for his troubles, but not a big deal. Okay with taking damage as the reward for having level two is infinitely bigger as the coolest throw animation in the game. You said coolest? I did, didn't I? You said coolest. Yeah, I like this one. All right, just like defending this pressure in the corner. Wow, the footsies right outside of the range of that counter poke from Scar as he gets opened up. And Sonic Fox dropping the combo. However, denying the wake up and just like that. Ten seconds of... Somebody called the I almost said it again. <laughs> a great uh, anti-delay wake up set up there by Sonic Fox. That icicle coming down. Very hard to time and your wake up attack isn't going to get you out of it. All right, here's it into the loop. Supergirl taking Captain Cole for an aerial ride into the setup now. Sonic just playing the defensive game, looking to block the mix-up, not challenging, but right on cue. Tries to interrupt into that string, gets launched. And, yo, Scar's pressure right now, extremely impressive. Sonic caught pressing buttons, looking for an escape, and just as quick as Scar, Scar lost his first health bar, he returned the favor to Sonic with a corner pressure of his own. Yeah, no, Scar is definitely very familiar with this, very familiar with the situation. Supergirl, just like Superman, loves keeping their opponent in the corner. You know, you, you it's all about whiff punishes. It's all about those great advancing um, normals. Yeah, Kryptonians in their oppression, always trying <laughs> to run something. Low into the overhead. Here's the grab once again. Woo! The coolest grab? Absolutely. That's the coolest grab. Oh, here comes the Icicle. Barely hit him. How did that hitbox reach him? There's no way Scar believes it. That, and Sonic Fox and Scar's in big time trouble. He can't attack as this ice protective shock is on him. He's going to hurt himself. There's the mix up. But wait a minute. Scar betting it all on the last pixel. Son yeah, and Sonic wants to stop this momentum right now. Very good call by Sonic Fox. Starting momentum, getting three, using three bars to get 30% back. And now he's got Scar a little bit farther back, farther away where he has options. And Scar has to stay on Sonic Fox. I was about to say he can't let him activate that. And a bad laser trades with the shot and Sonic Fox with the smile.
And I think so. Honeybee, look, he just got second at Evo. I, I, I think it's safe to say Illusions of the Underdog. My Earth's Flash would like a word. I can imagine what that word is. I tell you, but this is a family show. Begin. Oh, watch yourself. A, a little slick talk there from Ali as we get into the button check, and they actually let the intros rock, so big respect. That may be the last one you see. Possibly. I love all Green Arrow's quotes here. He's so funny. So funny throughout the game, all the dialogue, the clash quotes, the intros. Here we go. Buttons are checked. This is serious business here because whoever loses here Got is out of the tournament. Got an arrow with your name on it. My whole name or just Barry? I have an arrow just for you. Begin. Um, arrow just for Honeybee. All right, and jumps over the running man stance. Honeybee committing to the entirety of the string. Looking for the wake of a big wild right now with buttons being pressed everywhere. And great recognition. Illusions going for that Savage Blast to put some space in between them. Now, when Flash activates the speed force, he cannot block while in that situation. So the splash damage from that mildly explosive arrow allowed Illusions the space he needed to escape and reset that vision. I mean, that splash is so huge. It's really hard to avoid it. Illusions starting his corner oppression here. Honeybee trying to find his way out. Running Man Stance charges out, throws the interactable that is unblockable, and Illusions just trying to get out of there, trying to get away from Honeybee. Throwing arrows, waking up, doing everything he can. All right, and sliding after his illusions, keeping his movement, not standing in one spot at all. And Honeybee finally gets the chase down, but no continuation on the combo. And I think Honeybee knows that in this matchup, he needs to just, I mean, in all flash matches, Flash needs to do something. He has very limited full screen options there. And unfortunately for Honeybee, he got hit by that fire arrow kind of at the end of his shake. Not sure if he didn't hold it long enough, but. Oh, and the overhead. Arrow from Illusions to the background bounce. Yes, Be Brainiac is going to tickle him with the tentacles to see if he's worth collecting. And Illusions right now putting on a clinic working, Honeybee. Here we go. Flash just needs one hit, and he can take your entire bar. That's mainly because he's going to be doing so much damage and putting you in a very ambiguous setup. Illusions trying to jump out, trying to do anything. A, a block. That Those were just mids. Yeah, and Illusions looking for the wake up there, but the meaty's on point. Arrows are loaded, Savage Blast is active, Illusion sitting on a full bar. He could go for a super here, what will it be? No clash from Honeybee. It's gonna keep his health now, one hit away from a confirming the super. Honeybee also sitting on a full stock of meter. I think Honeybee needs to get into that super territory, that's what he's desperately going for right now. And oh. the big punch arrow meter burn from Illusions, a big duff. Huge chunk of damage if it hits you. Huge chunk on block. And Ali's showing off his archery skills with the shot through that fresh arrow. So slick. How does he have such a watery, juicy apple in his pocket this whole time? The whole time. And he was just that good. That victory is that. Yo, what a god. Why is Honeybee going for that right out the gate? I think he should have learned that in that first match. That, that green arrow has a fast enough option to stop the right. flash. And stop the flash with that bow to the face is Illusions. Electric arrow gets the conversion. More hits done. Very flashy stuff here by Illusions. And Honeybee finds his way in. Keep it going, and it illusions with a great tech roll right there, getting away from Honeybee, holding on to these arrows. And such patience from illusions, using the right arrows for the right situation, keeping the flash out as much as possible. Great anti here. The wake up from Honeybee blocked, but no punish. Instead, gets checked with the poke. That's a big drop by Illusions that should have been the bar. Very close to it. Again, Honeybee. Illusions is going to do it every single time. There's no way you can get through it. You need, a, you need to save that trait for when you finally get your hands on him. And there's the knockdown. Honeybee in control. Here's the running man stance cancel. Push block into the meter burn roll. The great defensive combo special if you're locked down in the corner with two bars ready to access. But Honeybee chases him down. Tails Illusions. Stop running from me, young man. To the corner we go. Big boy damage coming up. What's the setup? Oh, goes in for the jump in. A great blocks by Illusion. He does get opened up there by Honeybee. A little too slow for the hit confirm. Illusions, look at that great uh, the side switch there with the combo. And there's a full combo now, putting a bunch of arrows. All of them have Barry's name on it currently. And Illusions is mixing well in the corner. The Savage Blast. Will Honeybee be able to find an escape? Stop it. That Stop it. meter burn, air down arrow, does so much damage. Four arrows at a time. He only needs one of them to connect in that situation. Looking for the left-right cross-up, keeps it in front, and illusions. Forcing Honeybee off of the flash in the Supergirl. If this isn't control, I don't know what is. I mean, Honeybee, I've never seen him to the point where he's had a switch, except for in grand finals against Aquaman, uh, against Dragon.
Long story short, I died. Who killed you? Your cousin did, Kara. Begin. And the friendliest intro line I've seen so far, having a regular conversation before they look to murder each other here in Metropolis. They're just sparring, guys. They're just sparring. All right. And sparring. Not quite the word Honeybee's looking for. He wants to destroy Illusions and run it back. He is on his last leg here at Summer Jam. Down two games to zero and locked into Kara. Yeah, no, and Illusions is a, is a player that is very familiar with a, a, a whole slew of characters. So Illusions will have the freedom to pick a different character if he loses this match. And Honeybee is looking okay right now. You know, in control still, but getting opened up by Illusions, flipping out right in front of him, perfectly timed with Illusions back three in order not to get punished. Goes for the overhead, teleport connects! Yeah, great reaction from Honeybee there on that jumping arrow. Not quite sure if that was a punish or not. Either way, Illusions not blocking his head, punished by that fist. And the lasers to challenge the arrows. What a great switch here for Honeybee, working in his favor so far, playing a more defensive strategy now. Taking his time, and the meter burn roll to escape possible corner lockdown. I think Honeybee was just tired of not having full screen options, and, and Kara and Supergirl definitely has all of them. She has the teleport, she has the air lasers, and she has a walking laser. All right, into the loop here. We've seen this before. However, where will Honeybee end it? Oh, that's a big drop there. Honeybee leaving damage on the table and Illusions, of course, with the side switch here. Kara's now in the corner, nowhere to back up into. And a great down one, but doesn't go into the breath. Somehow and catches Illusion, pressing buttons. Yeah, the third time is the charm for Honeybee. Those three down pokes just commits to the ice breath, freezes him, and Illusions off of this clash. Now, different mindset. Has the air dash to chase and enough chip damage on that Hurricane Bow. Spinning that life bar to depletion is Illusions. Yeah, no, Lucian's definitely in there. He, he's not going to go down to a secondary uh, Supergirl here, especially not Honeybees. A little too much juggle there. Whips out, but nice punish on the down two. And the meter burn bounce canceled from Illusion for the mix-up. 300 damage and enough to load his fire arrows now. And Kara chasing him down. Here's the air dash. Free jump in. Float cancels. Great blocks from Illusions. Illusions trying to use that interactable to, but to I, I believe, to, to just jump away from Kara, to jump away from Honeybee. And this is going down to the wire now. Trades, no, Illusions recovers in time from the fire arrow. Stops his track shorts, looking for anything. One freeze with equal death and unclashable damage, but now Honeybee in big time trouble. Fire arrow's loaded. Here's the desperation teleport, but Illusions allows a chance for a clash. That is a very, very desperate teleport. And Honeybee forced to use his two bars. And because he only won by one, he only gets 15% back. He does not have meter to combo. He would need that background bounce to help him desperately. A Supergirl won't have the chance to build a bar. He will die. One will do it. Here's the Bloxy Club arrow. And just like that, great block from Illusion. You can see the pop off in the crowd from Down on the rest of the Summer Jam competition. One game at a time. One game at a time. And now what you guys are going to be looking out for in this matchup, because Superman's trait gives him armor-breaking abilities, when Superman's traded up, when he's glowing red, Bane will not be able to armor through his normal attack. So Gurr really has to pick his time wisely when he's gonna be when he's gonna be venoming up. Because there's no reason to venom up if Superman can break armor with any normal. He can break <laughs> armor with down one as long as he's traded up. Can we talk about the tail end of that button check where Gurr just kind of slapped him three times? Do you think that was <laughs> He was, just making sure, he was making sure he was frame perfect, that's all. Well, I'll tell you what's frame perfect. That ragdoll toss right into the corner. Theo with that wake up rising grab to escape the interactable and the laser back into the corner. Oh, Gurr looking for the full screen charge. Theo a little too smart for a move like that. All right, now Bane is in deep off after utilizing his Venom stacks. There is a period of time where he has to recharge. His movement becomes slower. He inflicts less damage and takes more damage. So management of his trait, such an important attribute for Bane players as Theo is putting on a punishment in the corner. 400 damage and the escape. And here we go. Gurr getting something going. And because it's level 3 Venom, it barely ran out. If he had been there just a second earlier, this would have been his bar to take. But Gurr not too far behind here. Yeah, and talking it, about that delay. He dashes right into it in a great meter burn roll, using the invincibility to go through that ground laser from Superman. The down two connecting into the command grab that Bane Bomb, planting Superman into the depths of Atlantis.
and that that great on point punish by by Dio, seeing that the overhead elbow drop miss. And this is big trouble. How does it feel when Superman's going red? Don't you tell the people about that? It doesn't feel great. Not at all. Gurr using one bar, getting 15% back, betting that Theo wouldn't bet anything. Here we go, Venom is up, and because he wasn't in Venom when the Flash started, he, he wasn't forced to go back in a debuff. So that's why he decided to use it right then and there. And look at this patience, Gurr trying to walk it down, getting close. Life extremely, momentum shift right now, and the bait on the throw, late meter burn back three, and that trait damage from Superman so much more, but now Theo can be in big time trouble. He's in the corner a little too early. Wakes up again, it's Theo finding so much success from wake up attacks. I mean, this, that's what you gotta do against Bane. That, the worst thing you could do is not wake up against Bane. You're just there, prone to command grab after command grab, letting him do whatever he wants. You, you know, it is an option. You know, people complain about the armor, but it is an option. You have to figure out what to do. And look he, at Gur, he's going into deep contemplation mode, just Superman. closing his eyes, thinking about it. Back to the character Bane. select screen. He's Fighters gonna stay Bane. Respect the decision, he was definitely in there. Just a few things. Both of those charges are gonna get jumped over air dash and laser punish for free by Theo. He's simply waiting. If you throw something at him, he's happy Begin. to take it gladly. But this time Theo opening up offensively, canceling into the trait, Superman's trait, allowing him to break armor. So Bane wants to watch him on that venom. And the whiff punish there by Theo, waiting for that standing one, baiting him to do anything. Again, the senseless charge there, I don't like it by Gurr. Just like you said before, Theo's a little too smart for that. The down two, there we go, the anti-air, knocking down Theo, but dropping the combo, letting him scoop out of there, scoop out of the corner. Yeah, not sure what happened there. Gurr kind of missing it in deep up now. This combo is going to do enhanced damage and 390 for Theo. Here's the heat zap, trying to play the zoning game. At this pace, chip damage will do, and the Superman jump punch, excuse me, is the move of choice to get the job done. No, it's definitely a great wake up, and, and look, Superman has so, so much depth to his wake up game. He's got the Superman punch, the rising grab, Oh, here we go, Gurr. A great read now, planting with the Bane Bomb, that cape going into the crates here at the bottom of the Red Sun Prison. I feel like Gurr didn't think he'd, he'd, he'd spend the meter and a horrible miss of that whiff punish there. Gurr is not on point right now. And he's gonna whiff the entirety of the string. Easy punish for Theo and Gurr forced to clash right away. Both men decide to use one bar, no health regain and no health, no damage dealt. The unblockable interactable coming out, and again, Gurr dashing the recovery, getting eight alive by the forward two from Theo into the corner. Oppression now, and this like that easy bait jump two into the dive bomb. That conversion making Theo look like he is 20 steps ahead. And Gurr once again downing himself, shaking that head. He's made it this far, wants to be composed. Back to the character select screen as we hear the silence from the end game audio. Superman. And the silence in Gurr's head, maybe. That voice can help him find a way, but currently he looks like a defeated man. Everyone's screaming no about Deadshot. Everyone wants to see Bane, and Gurr is usually one to tend to, to, to hear out the audience. He really cares what everyone thinks. Absolutely. Thinking about it and committing to Bane Begin. is Gurr trying to recreate the close playing from that first game and there you go right on point girl looking to armor through the trait advantage but superman's trait breaking his armor instead fights back phantoms up theo is without trait he's gonna have to deal with this pressure and a whiff on the elbow and look at that matchup knowledge there theo knows that he doesn't have to rush the timing just calmly walk in and punish perfectly recovery for days Looks like Gurr was looking for a wake-up attack there. Theo not giving it to him. Theo is, is definitely a Superman that's more patient and more okay with just sitting there and blocking. I feel like he'll backdash way more than, he, than he'll wake-up attack. Gurr looking for the whip punish in that situation a little late. Not sure what he was looking for there with the throw attempt. That's Superman damage. 505 hits. 100 damage per hit. And Gurr now playing a little bit more aggressive, chasing him down. Here's the bounce cancel into the level 3 Venom. No, he drops the combo, drops the bounce cancel there, looking for the tusk to connect, and it doesn't. Yeah, and the elephant in the background crying as his tusk wasn't put to great use. You posted me for no reason. Put me as taxidermy, and now you're going to die for it as the animal rights guys are in Superman's favor. But Bane trying to find a way on his last limbs. Man, this seems so rough for Bane to get in.
Yeah, no, definitely. And that trait does not help. Trait going right through your main mechanic here, your main mechanic of armor. No, no tick throw there from the down two. Gurr trying to get Theo. I feel like he, he's trying to get Theo to, to, to get overzealous, to get over aggressive, and Theo's just not going to do that. You are starting to crack. That's just my knuckles. Wow, and just like that, what a clash quo. If it was turned the other way around, Superman saying that the Bane, it definitely fit the real life situation here. And this is gonna be close. Maybe it doesn't need meter to extend this, but the scoop into the punch and only the realist of real masters won't even let me finish the sentence as Theo, another 3-0. Going up against Black Adam, grapples away immediately to get things started. There's the cancel, Dragon with the challenge, straight into the throw. There we go, Dragon checking him closer to the corner, throwing those interactables at him. And the mother box is out. The amazing thing about it is that it doesn't go away even if Cyborg gets hit. And look at that timing there by Dragon, avoiding it perfectly, continuing his combo. That's matchup knowledge right there. Well, right now, Dragon knows a thing or two about the spacing, the timing, and the escape. And Illusion's going to punch the wind button. Dragon, very dominating first round. Not sure what's, what the plan is, but again, one game at a time. Illusion trying to get some space here, but then he decides to go in and, and Dragon gives him a foot dive of his own. And Dragon trying to dash his way in. That's very risky. Illusion should be looking for it soon. Grapples away to escape. Peter burns it. And a push block there. Didn't want to take that last orb there. Wants to buy some space with the use of one bar. A great trade in Illusion's favor there as he doesn't get his combo. He's going to have to now clash the here. It's, it's hard. He's trying to get his zoning going, but Dragon's making fantastic approach with each Nova Blast from the air. Fighting his time, there's a die kick over. Nice punish. Doesn't get much of down one. Great punish there, though. Here comes the mother box setup. Great blocks by Dragon, being very, very patient. Illusion, again, buying his time, waiting for the mother box to come back so he can resummon it. Take a seat, young man. Here's the clock strength. Cyborg reaching for the toilet, not sure if God's used those. He kind of probably flies and does his urinal thing in the skies, but Dragon going up one game to zero, and the Cyborg dream may be dead as quick as it started. We didn't even have a chance to scream booyah. I'm very upset. He went straight into this character select. There's no way he wanted anything to do with a rematch. But hopefully he can continue to, to, to let us root on the underdog here. And we've seen this a lot this weekend. A bunch of guys playing their non-mains, kind of getting destroyed that first game, and then bringing back clutch sets. And we look at it, and you think, did he throw it away? Did he put himself in an unnecessary hole? Doesn't necessarily matter or not. Good for discussion, but Illusion's going back to Green Arrow now and already looking a bit more comfortable as Dragon takes the life lead. All right, and the down one, Palpatine keeps Illusions there, and Illusion slides out. Dragon continuing his pressure, and Illusions finds his way out with that meter burn roll. All right, here's the jump in now, the Savage Blast. Looking for the dive kick, great trade. Could have been big time trouble there. Loads the ice arrow, and he's putting the fear into Dragon's face as he stands there and watches. Gets opened up from the overhead, full combo damage. Look at all that damage, meterless stuff there, just because he had the corner. Great awareness there by Illusions. Oh, and what a punish on a dive kick. Three arrows to the head. Not even the knee. Straight to the dome. And Illusions now looking like this godlike man we saw in the first round of Losers against Honeybee. Oh, Dragon dashing over to the other side. Keeping Illusions in the corner. This is where you want to keep your opponent. Your opponent has no room to move back. And you re you're really in control uh, when it comes to spacing, when it comes to footsies. Pretty well, much in any fighting game. Well, talking about Splitsies like and, uh, Splitsies. Splitsies Splitsies. and space control, Black Adam plays a lot of that in the air with those dive kicks and that floaty jump, looking to pick some movement out to open you up. Does so successfully. Illusions now without a clash, and with that arrow out and active, green arrow cannot block. So, I was just great dive that. kick to go over the arc from that ice arrow. Yeah, no, you, you really have to kind of switch that flip in your mind, you know. As soon as you see the arrow loaded up, you can hit him if you're close enough and if you can beat his arrow. All right, waiting now, the meter burn roll. Great stuff from Illusions. Into the corner we go. Loads and it up. What's the arrow of choice? Fire. 
And look at this choice here. Because Illusions did such a great job of managing his meter throughout this entire match, he gave he, he took away that option from Dragon to clash. And Dragon's just like, I have to eat this combo and I have to eat this horrible situation. And, and look at the change and the success. Just like that, Aquaman. Illusions takes that game. And we know he was afraid of Aquaman at the beginning. But by picking Cyborg the first time, he gives Dragon the advantage in the counterpick game. So here we go, Aquaman's on the screen now. Illusions booing to the crowd, putting a thumbs down up. Are, is Aquaman still supposed to be getting boos? I is mean, he? I thought he was normalized. It may be a matchup specific thing here. Illusion simply doesn't want to deal with. However, there's a punish on the tentacle strike close enough that slide reaching, getting the knockdown. Loads up the arrows, chip damage now, peace. Walking forward, here's the punish. And just like that, the water of life coming in handy. Illusions getting punished himself for punishing Aquaman. But right back at you, here's the beauty of Interactables, allowing Illusions a chance to escape. And look at that. Dragon getting opened up there. Very unlike him. This man has one of the best defense options that I've ever seen. Arrow to the face as Illusions jumps back. Now Dragon with the life deficit has to chase Illusions now. Right where he wants him, but the Trident Rush as the screams from the crowd drown in. It's one a, hit, one block. It's okay, it's all been normalized here. Illusions about to take that first bar, proving everyone wrong about this matchup. And what a read there, looking for the chip damage with the fire arrow. Dragon trying to jump out and survive on that magic pixel, but no, the air to air arrow archery, man. It's, it's just a hobby for arrow, it's just a hobby. I think it's a little bit more than that. <laughs> Maybe. It's definitely not just a hobby for Illusions. Illusions are always on point. Those arrows do not miss. All right, taking his time now, one fire arrow. Trying to look for the hit advantage or the spacing to load up another batch. Does so successfully, is looking to trade. I think he wants to take those trades. I think he's doing a little bit more damage than those tentacle strikes. He is. And back to back now, it's getting closer. Air to air, jump arrow. Great aerial attacks. Here's the plus frames on the slide. And right now, Illusions in control, forcing Dragon to block. Fantastic Promise? sequence for Illusions. Back to the corner. What's the mind game? Three bars of peace. Three bars of peace. I think that's a good call on Illusions, trying to just not let Dragon take anything. And Dragon thought he wasn't going to bet anything at all. And did you see the up down shimmy from Illusions there? Forcing Dragon to jump, maybe looking for an aerial, but clips the legs with that fire arrow. Illusions in control now. Any chip damage, it's all adding up. And somehow was able to block there. Dragon with the perfectly timed jump in just wasn't fast enough. And that's a huge punish there. Yeah, big time risk too. But Illusions, knowing he had his clash handy, strate strategically, excuse me, gives it up to gain the chip damage. One more string into that Hurricane Bow will be enough to do the job. But he may not need to get close as the arrow is loaded. The overhead, one more. Dragon cannot take any chip and dashes into an arrow. Illusions, two games straight with Green Arrow. Dragon. Dragon down to his last pick. He can switch over. Now, Dragon has been, he, he has played Poison Ivy a lot before he switched over to Aquaman, you know, to full main Aquaman that won him Evo. He was an amazing Poison Ivy player, and I know Poison Ivy got a few buffs here and there, but Dragon going right back to Black Adam. Illusion was in control those last few matches completely, especially towards the end. This is so unreal. Dragon said, I've had enough of your semantics. I am going to come out with this forward one and punish you right away. 400 damage. Dragon a little slow there in the punish. And, and I, I feel like Black Adam's down one should be able to get through that, that, uh, that meter burn option that is in the bow spin. And the fire arrow knocking him down in the corner. Illusion's in control here. Savage blasting his way out, looking for that dive kick. Dude, what a punish. You take all the damage you can get, and right now, Dragon on the offensive. And look at that there, catching Illusion, doing something, and he just whiffed out that wake up so perfectly. Dragon is not going down without a fight. Not at all. Those were three very small combos, but when you add it all up, you're talking about 400 damage collectively. Jumping in now is Illusion, trying to be more offensive in the shimmy in his face. Beautiful stuff. Oh, it looks like Illusions was looking for the background bounce there, but a slight miscalculation. A great interruption on the down one into the Palpatine, as you love to call it. Into the corner, here's the mix-up. Savage Blast looking for a chip damage setups now, plus frames. And what a great read from Dragon. Tried to get the most instant air of dive kicks, but Illusions recovering in time, able to block. I thought that was very risky by Illusions there to challenge that meter burn dive kick. And, and, but it was the right call there. And right, great trade working in Dragon's favor. And again, blowing up Man, the wake up. This surprises you. <laughs> <laughs> the flash codes are amazing. 
Shoutouts to WB Game. Shoutouts to NRS. Fire arrows active. Here's the dive. He's just a little bit short and great spacing on that with punish from Illusions to the corner. We go now. Savage blasts. Fire arrow jumps in. No time to load anything up. Regular arrows simply looking for the mix ups of the old school variety. Overhead low. Pressure up. Denial of exit. This is lockdown damage in the corner. Illusions not allowing Dragon to escape. Plus frames. No mercy. No escape. And Illusions is one hit away from advancing here in the loser side. Oh, don't count Dragon out just yet. Look at this damage. He was normalized, but he still hurts. Keeping this going. The hard knockdown. Baiting it out, but somehow. A minute. And Karma, it comes back for you. I have to take you back a week to Vianality. Dragon versus Theo. The double attack. The down two. Classic with the dump, jump two. Crazy hit. These guys just kind of duke it out old school. Uh, you know, on the character select screen themselves. Yeah, I mean, either way it goes. With Scar going to Brainiac, Theo could have easily gone to Superman had he wanted to. So he's going to stay locked in with the King of Atlantis. And Brainiac looking to collect. We share no similarities. You're both aliens we don't need. Begin. Ooh, Ooh. and Aquaman with the big boy talk, letting Brainiac know he is not necessary with punish immediately from Theo, and he is in control here in this game one. And Scar checking him with a low of his own, and there's the trait. Now when Brainiac does summon that trait, he can delay it, it can come out later, and as long as he doesn't get hit, it's still gonna make its way towards you like it did right there. Just like that, Scar with the full combo. Beta Drone trying to get summoned. A fantastic reaction from Theo, checking him with that tentacle strike as he uses his tentacles to take it to the sky. Brainiac, some of the craziest air mobility with cross ups and mix ups galore, using those Beta Drones to cover his approach. And there it is, the back three. Can Scar finish his plate? He does. The instant dive kick, so slick, so fast. All right, Theo not taking this line down, going out, trying to bait it out, not anticipating that that shoulder charge by, by Scar as a wake-up attack and the down two getting Brainiac out of the air. Brainiac so mobile, so fast. He can be anywhere on the screen. Does a check, takes advantage, calls the drones out, and Theo, fantastic challenge before the drone can get there. Screaming for the Trident Rush, keeping it safe now. And I think Theo's doing right there is he's waiting to see the drone physically and then picking his moment to attack. If Brainiac is in, in range. That beautiful gold trident putting in the work and the denial, big anti-air from Theo using that trident to cover the skies and the dive kick from Scar. And the clash back Atlantis here. demands justice. It picks a weak champion. Wow, and this nasty Ooh. talk right back at him. Brainiac not believing in Arthur's claim to the throne for the people of Atlantis. And look at the way Brainiac just blocks, just come, just standing there, taking every little chunk of that Trident Rush. And no combo conversion there, trying to use that dive kick to meterlessly, meterlessly combo into the Beta Drone. Punish on the dive kick, that is negative eight on block. And smart stuff there by... We've yet to plumb the depths. And smart stuff there by Scar, waiting to get one bar in, in order to initiate the clash and make sure he gets something back for it. And the second time's a charm there as he gets the combo, meterless dive kick. Watch out, the interactable is in play and Scar goes for the throw, keeps Theo in the corner. And I think he was anticipating Theo to use that interactable. Theo did not bite, do not use. It's really hard to bait this man. Wow, a great combo, keeping it unclashable. However, Theo didn't have a clash and enough patience. The wake up scoop coming from Theo, that beta drone, dropping that little touch of electricity to the feet of Aquaman. Who knew electricity could do good against water? Superman. Easy confirmed there. Even a chip damage kill would have been perfect for the setup and the switch to Superman. As I mean, canon as it just is to get. That's pretty canon. I mean, this is... Brainiac was the main villain in this entire storyline. And what a more fitting battle arena. Here I'm Superman. Better oxymoron, I have not heard. Wow, Brainiac is such a boss. That he definitely is. Now Theo going to Superman, the main thing you're gonna see is uh, you're gonna see more Brainiac all over Superman. Although Superman does have a great down two, nowhere near as great as Aquaman's down two. And I feel like that's why Theo went to that character. He wanted to rely on that anti-air. Uh, because it is way more reliable. Here comes the drone to back up and Brainiac right behind it. 
Goes for the dive kick, and Theo a little too late to punish there. And Scar doesn't leave him unchecked. That beta drone coming right behind now. Scar again covering his approach, but Theo, fantastic denial of the jump in. Anything a little too close to his air, and he's not having it. Here's the full combo in the corner, meter burn, ice breath. And Theo now looking for the shimmy. Great blocks on the mix up, down one into the scoop. Hey, down one into scoop, it does combo. Very unsafe stuff though, and that down two. Proving me completely wrong, it's just as reliable as Aquaman's down to. Knocking Brainiac out of the sky and taking that first bar for Theo. And the huge damage traded up lasers, even on block. Theo denying this is dominating. Superman letting Brainiac know this is his world and he will have none of it. There you go, Scar's last chance. He does take the throw, but Theo ready for that forward 2-3. And that was the quickest player select we've seen tonight. That was a body coming in from Theo. It was, but this was probably Scar's plan. Maybe he wanted him to start with Aquaman. And this is just gonna be a back-to-back -back counter pick match. This all relies on Scar taking this game right here, because if Theo gets desperate, maybe he's gonna go to Aquaman, then Scar can go back to Brainiac and, and close out the set. And now as the villain, Scar going to Kara. You need to stop. You can't stop me. Your heartbeat says you're lying. Mm, now he's yeah. going on the other side of the cannon as the crowd is popping off for these intros. Now, Kara against Cal. Who is the true defender of Krypton's ways? Superman's definitely lost his ways, and all it took was one bad day. And uh, Theo taking it out on Supergirl right now, keeping her in the corner. She does have wake-up options, and Theo's ready for it. <laughs> and unfortunately, does get frozen for his troubles. Now the tables have turned. This is the Supergirl roulette. Where are you gonna land? Are you gonna be in a steady position? Yes, and Theo with a great reaction there, knowing that it is neutral and you can challenge when Kara leaves you there in a standing position. Yeah, and interrupts that float cancel right there. Theo having none of it. It's not gonna wait and allow Scar to give him mix-ups for free. Instead, makes his own look at forward two into the trade. Big damage, but now the laser to counteract the zoning, keeping Cal out. Theo, however, with the life lead, doesn't need to take any risks. Both these players so scared to whiff punish anything. These are whiff punish monster characters right here. And no punish on that breath right now. Neither the air attack. Both guys so much respect for each other. Look at this neutral. And Theo finally, after about 10 seconds, opens Scar up. Back to the corner. And, and look at that. The perfectly timed jump. And he did land there just in time. Is it enough to close it out? Or does he need to go for one more reset? Now with that enhanced Supergirl damage, it's going to be chip damage territory. And the meaty 1-1. One -one. Theo trying to jump out. But Scar having none of it. Meaty's on point, And these guys trading blows back and forth. And look at that, Scar trying to bait out Theo, and Theo not biting at all. And no hit confirmed there, but just keeps it safe. The dash of Theo looking for the challenge, and the meter burn back three. Big damage, spinning a second bar, 500 damage, and corner change. Oh, don't test Theo's reactions. Earth doesn't need a dictator. This world is mine. This world is Superman. Superman, the only way to have, he thinks the only way to have peace is to just control everyone completely here. And Theo in complete control right here. Wow, when the dash up throw, extremely risky from Scar, but works out in his favor. Again, so much respect from these competitors. Looking for Scar to challenge there. Scar not giving it to him. Ooh, and a great trade. Could have spelled trouble for any of these men now. Just patience. Here's the air dash now. Great blocks from Theo. And the teleport. Not sure if that's what Scar was looking for, but he got it anyway. Worked out in his favor. No meter burn there from the breath, and there it is. Trying to challenge right after, and Scar giving him a punch of his own. The meter burn back three, keeping it plus is Theo. Here's the lasers, stopping his dash attempt, and the error error attempt. The jumping one starts up so fast. Such a great anti-air tool by Superman, and the back dash to avoid the unblockable bumper car deal with the read. One mistake in the neutral Superman. is all it took from Scar and that reactionary air dash from Theo just shows a great awareness recognition and easy reaction meter burn laser enough to get the job done and Scar's gonna stay with Supergirl doesn't like the stage all of those unblockable interactables to the red sun prison it couldn't get any more fitting earth has a new protector don't hold your breath kid Either way, you're going down. Mm. Begin. She doesn't care about the protection of Earth. She is here to defeat Cal and the Tombstone right on his head, Scar getting that ever-important first bar of meter. 
Yeah, that overhead is a little tricky there. I feel like that's the option that a lot of people forget that Supergirl has. Right after that, that strange looking kick, that very defining looking kick, the overhead usually is coming. And Theo with the with the ice breath right there, the back three, full combo, pushing Scar closer and closer to the corner. Scar does, does have access to that interactable there. As you can see, it blink for a second. And he tries to go for it. Theo perfectly spacing it out, perfectly knowing exactly how far he had to stand to not get hit by it. And the whip punish, the forward two, three, do not press three unless you're sure it's gonna hit, unless you're sure it's gonna meet your opponent's body. Not sure if that was a bait there. Can we call that an American reset? The forward three bounces him up into the corner. Into the loops, definitely the Kryptonian reset. Now Scar with the knockdown, what's it gonna be? Shimmy Shimmy and the throw, great tech from Theo, but challenges with the buttons. And let me throw you, sir, hold that into the corner. Oh, Kryptonians call it a beatdown. The down two, Theo, force the clash. To get hurt. Go ahead, underestimate me. Yo, Kara is so angry right now. She is ready to prove that she is just as strong, if not stronger, to take over everything and put an end to the regime now. Great blocks, patience from Scar. And again, this time not falling for it, but not watching her legs and gets opened up towards the end of his trait. I mean, it's a very risky move. Very surprised that Theo, a player of that caliber, will go for something like that. And there's definitely, Scar definitely knows you can blow up that option if you block it. Wow, and Aaron Laser there allows himself to be opened up. Theo taking full advantage now, in control with the life lead. Oh, the overhead, and Theo blocks it. Unreal. Need a dictator. My rule brought peace. And now Superman pandering to Kara, but it's too late. We're in the middle of this brawl. She doesn't want to hear it. Oh, the huge whip punish. Scar was so sure that jumping attack was going to connect. And Theo just a little too far away for it. Catches him with the forward two, three, keeping him in the corner. This isn't it quite yet. One more reset should do it. What's he going to go for? Oh, it doesn't hit confirm. Instead, commits to the string now. Keeps it safe. Nice throw tech from Scar. Down to his last chance. Need a burn laser, looking for big chip territory. So much patience. The heat's out, nice punish on the air laser from Scar. Looking for the mix ups, gonna commit to something, a throw, it's what's it gonna be? Trying to open him up, the wake up, chipping away as Theo. Scar looking for the escape, and wow, activates the trait laser, but that air laser from Superman. Where I guess he had such a great, favorable matchup in Red Hood against Green Arrow that. He gave it a shot, and he completely dominated Illusions. Well, crab woman swinging into the bar. Here you like dangerous men. Capes are cooler than parkas. I'm practical, sweetheart. There you Begin. go, my man, defending his fashion choice to rock the parka. Captain Cold owning everything that he is. I respect this man. Very confident there. Even in the, in the presence of beauty that you, you see in, in Selena Kyle. Here we go, connecting the back three. Pushing her closer to the corner, getting the trait to level one. Sonic now, Sonic Fox wants level two. He wants the snow globe option there. And he's trying to get some breathing room there, and he's going to see it with the coolest throw in the game as Katana Prime is perfectly put for us earlier today. And I whiff there, and the anti air, Samish having none of it. Sonic will not get his offense started for free against this young man with the reactions to match. And the from back three slightly misses there. Samish not far enough for to, to be closed out by that low freezing puddle. And both of these men whipping normals, not committing to anything too risky or serious. The throw from Samish and the level two is out now. It's gonna go full screen. Sonic's gonna spend this time and regain the level two. And what a beautiful bait there by Samish. Goes into the globe, comes back out and gets Sonic Fox the bite that like was, the fish that he is. That was beautiful from Samish, knowing exactly when that timing was going out and Catwoman enough to keep that combo going. Staying in front now into the corner, puts himself into trouble is Samish. And this could be big trouble. Sonic with the pressure now. Here's the wall meter, burns it, plus frames. And the down two of his own, denying the jump exit. And just like that, Samish was having control of the space and timing of everything got into the corner and hasn't been able to play since here we go tying it up now sonic fox is the one in the corner however he does have level two trait ready to go so all he has to do is find a, a connecting hit 
or find some space here in the middle. And you called it right there on the connecting hit from that straight shot. Blocking the cat dash for the punish. He's going to allow Samisa fall out of this combo. But the meter burn back three, great idea. Advancing Catwoman's hitbox so that she wouldn't be tapped by the ice sickle. Samisa now back in control. And look at that anti-Captain Cold set up there, knowing that he needs to go for a complete cross-up to avoid that wake-up attack. And Sonic's going to allow himself to be hit by the trait. Oh, oh, the crowd popping off. And to Catwoman the... getting a little saucy there on that one. Oh, yeah. There's the level two blocks the Cat Dash. Now, Samisha's just in trouble. Yeah, just stop thieves. this. Hell will freeze over first. Oh, okay. Oh, there is no honor among these as Captain Cold is put for us. Oh, he's looking for it. The, the yeah. sweep. And using her projectile attack to not even risk being frozen herself. No man has a clash. Here's the setup from Sonic. Samiz back dashes away, uses all of Catwoman's mobility to escape. And look at Sonic Fox. Didn't want to take the bait that time. However, will Samiz calculate the slowdown from the snow globe? And no, he like won't. This. He was quitting froze after Sonic Fox expended the meter on that low ice puddle, so he couldn't get a continuation on the combo, nor did he have time to recharge the level two. Samish in an excellent position here. Tosses Steve, chip damage territory. It's and not cut enough. To the camera, wait a minute, a little bit early. Here's the level two. We are down in a very clutch situation. Samish takes a huge risk, dashing into the snow globe. Oh, Sonic Fox going with the meter burn, rolling oh, dead tight air. He and, rolls out. What is oh, happening? And the cat dash from Samish. The escape. He smiles. He knew. He made the great decision. So smart. So clutch. And so much excitement from both of these young men. Samish really doing his homework here. This is the first time I've seen anyone go toe to toe with this man's Captain Cold. However, it wasn't free. Sonic Fox definitely understands a little bit more of what Samish knows. And there's no way this kid didn't do his homework. Blows up the trait, gets to level two, but Samish does get his hit in. Sonic Fox trapped in the corner. The delay wake up lets him turn the tables, but the back three connects. Yeah. And Samish for a full combo here. Chip territory. Yeah, riding that momentum is Samish. Now Sonic trying to be a bit more offensive, but Catwoman with the range of that whip checking Sonic and keeping him down on the ground right where Catwoman wants him. It looks like a little switch stance there from Sonic Fox trying to get Catwoman to, to do something. He's not trying to let her go. And, and Sonic a little overzealous using definitely. the meter burn roll and throwing out that full screen, trying to chase Catwoman down. The wrong idea as Samisha's poise and spacing has been immaculate and that much better than Sonic in this first set so far. Oh, backing off. Sonic Fox trying to get the most out of this and unfortunately doesn't have the patience to just kind of wait it out and possibly build some meter. The snow globe is out. Samish decides to back out of there. He knows he's on a nice, healthy life lead. He doesn't want to lose it. He doesn't want to lose it. He's okay with Sonic Fox setting up because he, he's got nothing to lose, nothing to risk. Quit screwing around. Aw, let's keep playing. Two bars each. Clash aside. Nothing regained and nothing dealt. Sonic is on the ropes here. Samish has everything going in his favor right now. Trying to come back at Sonic. There's the whip trip. Escapes again, this time Sonic not going to chase Samish down as he's been punished for it on multiple occasions, trying to adapt piece by piece. There's the anti-air. Here's the start of a comeback, but again, a seemingly insurmountable lead. Ice puddle on the floor. Jumps oh. over it, but gets bopped by that 4-3, landing on the ice. Excellent sequence. Samish finding trouble, trying to close out Sonic Fox in this game too. And Sonic Fox make this comeback. Oh, gets hit by the end of that yeah, that cartwheel. And the down one, Tonic Fox desperately taking out that snow globe. Needs to push the meat in here. And Samish the, still has his clash. The chip doesn't work. And the whip coming just in time. Had Samish landed, he would have definitely be frozen. However, Sonic Fox hopes for grand finals. Maybe on freeze a little bit now as Samish is up two games to zero. And, you know, I feel like Sonic Fox usually is that player when he's down like this, 2-0. He went down like this against Theo when he was showing off Dark Side, and he quickly switched to Deadshot, but right now, Sonic Fox is sticking to his guns. And I liked what I saw from Samish there. Sonic was all smiling, laughing, and funny, and just like that, and Samish had this serious look on his face. And this is not a game, my friend. I am not playing with you. I'm about to pop and get into Grand Finals on the winner's side? But we've seen Sonic down before. Here's the combo continuation. Gets to level two. He does not. 
Look at that combo potential because the snow globe slows everyone else down in there except for Captain Cold. Yeah, and Catwoman having no problems evading the police of Gotham as she plants the bomb on their cars. Nothing. Just another day in the life of this cat burglar as Sonic Fox tries to play the safe game. Again, not chasing Samish as much as he did in the first two. And there's the level two. Let's see, is he going to leave him in the snow globe? No, doesn't matter. He didn't have the health to take anything. Sonic Fox takes that clean life. That clean first bar. There's a clean jump in from Samish. The forward three, full combo damage here. Hard knockdown. What's it going to be? Ambiguous cross-up setup with Sonic Fox blocked successfully. Samish has now put himself into the corner. Both players just slugging it out, doing such a great job of blocking everything that their opponent is throwing at them. And the down two gets Catwoman out of the air, charges up his straight, and decides to, to leave damage on the table. For full level two, it's been working out so far in this third game. There it is, the whip trip. It's going to load it right back up. Catwoman's backdash is so amazing, keeps her so low to the ground, recovers so quickly, even when she's inside that snow globe, it is so fast, gets her out of everything. And jumping right onto that ice puddle is Samish as we work our way back towards the corner. Sonic Fox looking for the rush down here with jump two. Doesn't get much in terms of combos, but Samish able to take advantage of that whiffed attack. And just like that, the claws are out. The claws are out. KP couldn't have said it better. In any other way. Here we go. The down two again canceling into the trait restart. Sonic Fox just wants some breathing room to throw that snow globe out. And here it is, Samish stuck in the corner. Oh, and chip damage set up no matter what. Wherever Samish went, that was the ultimate lockdown. You were gonna die at any position on the screen. You simply had to choose your death. How do you want it? Is Samish gonna switch away from Cap? I don't think I've ever seen this man play a different character. Maybe he knows something. Now, look, well, look, wait a minute, Miguel. This is what poison ivy. It, it I can't even like say the name because we don't see this character. I haven't seen this character play on stream since Combo Breaker. P P no, no, what a tease. Well, I he's like, thinking but, about it. Let's well, let's not get. But see, the thing is that poison ivy has such great full screen presence in those vines that she summons. She can meter burn them and send out more so vines. Her trait tracks completely at full screen in, in all situations so i i it looks like samiz is going for the full screen option but he's scared of how sonic how oppressive sonic box's aggressive Poison offense is gonna be and he against commits to pamela isley he does it poison ivy against captain cold no way i think this is a good pick right here there's no way a player at samiz's caliber is not is captain not gonna think about cold. it don't pretend you don't dig me I you're right. Kiss me. Ooh. And it's straightforward as it goes, the way I like it. Poison Ivy telling Captain Cold, let's go. And we are in there now. There we go, Samid trying to get Sonic Fox to press the button. But Sonic Fox is being very patient there. But he does move. I think he was anticipating a throw or maybe trying to jump out of there. And now it's Sonic Fox's time to attack the whip punish. Goes for the trait, trying to get that level two, and he does get it. But Pamela has her vines all over him, all over his feet. He needs to watch out. And full combo here from Samish. And that kiss she was so looking for, she gives it to him immediately. Live in the first round, baby. Unblockable, interactable. Continues the onslaught of damage and successfully calls out nice shade. But Sonic Fox with that ice shot to the face, getting ready a rid of any potential chip setups. You know. Yeah, that's the main thing you want to do if you can do it. Once she summons out that trait, it will go away if you successfully hit her. And there is the whiff punish now. Meterless variety and Samish making Poison Ivy pick work. I'm telling you, I saw it coming. I, it, it, she's got the full screen options. He can't just summon trait willy-nilly like he can against almost everyone else in the cast. See, now he can go full screen and Sonic Fox has no choice but to go in after him. And look at the anti-air from Samish. Such points. Look at the defense. Not pressing a button until necessary. There's Nightshade. Tries to beat to burn his way out. Could have been big time trouble for him. However, only loses his trait. Not a big loss. Samish still in big time control here. Sonic Fox doesn't seem to have an answer. He doesn't have an answer, and he, he, he could possibly have an answer in a different character pick, but Sonic Fox is locked in here. This Samiz just needs this one win. Just like that, trying to force his way in. A different game plan from Sonic Fox. Instead of keeping Ivy away, exactly where she wants to be, is forced to switch gears and make itself as rushed down heavy as possible. He can't give her any breathing room. If she summons that trait, he is locked down. 
the Peterburg back three, a great option. Sonic Fox in big trouble. Huge trouble here. Both players betting two bars, not giving any room, but but the trait is summoned. It is out, but Poison Ivy takes a hit and it goes away. Not sure what Sonic Fox is looking for here. He's looking for a damage buff. He's trying to get damage anywhere he can. Oh, then and the anti-air buffed down to big time trouble for Sonic Fox. And what a massive hitbox on that forward three. The knockdown. Tries the back dash, get caught with the throw. And Sonic doesn't have time for games, no time for charging. Purely offensive now. Here's another throw. So much aggression. So much my games. And the neutral jump enough and some mege. The Poison Ivy pick proving successful as he walks into the Grand Finals here at Summer Jam. That may be some next level Yomi coming from Illusions as Green Arrow is back on the screen. Miss, I wouldn't dare. Let's see how you handle that bow. Begin. Now I do recall Theo saying at CEO that Green Arrow probably beats Superman. And that was before Superman was nerfed. And so maybe that's why he's picking Kara right here. She does have an option to kind of stop Green Arrow uh, at full screen here. And, and that option is that teleport. Yeah, let's make it abundantly clear that that is Super Girl, not Superman that Theo is playing as Illusions loads up the arrows, trying to keep that zoning that he's been doing so effectively well. The current story of this tournament, Illusions just as good as anybody in the top eight, trying to work his way through a sea of Kryptonians as he makes his trek towards the Grand Finals. Right here, Theo is, uh, is, is afraid of that bumper car option as Illusions kind of camps it out. I, I feel like he's just kind of taking advantage of the fact that Theo is letting him back off, so he's not going to go straight to that unblockable interactable right away. He's probably going to save it for the perfect time. Back dashing, loading up the arrow with the back three. It's Such up. control right here by Illusions. Oh, and the wake up teleport from Theo. Huge risk, but works out. And back to back, the wake up hurricane bow coming from Illusions. If you want to play risky, let's do it together. But right now, Theo's in control. And wait a minute, does it work? It does. Better trade in Illusions' favor with the exploding, unblockable, interactable setup. And back to the neutral that they both want to play. Yeah, the full screen game, the arrows. Now, the unfortunate thing for Illusions is he does have to load them up after he wastes the arrow. And you can see the progress of the arrows down at the bottom of the screen. He's got one fire arrow left. And here we go, regular green arrows. They do no damage and almost have no hit stun. Yeah, but that interactable, like the rest on this stage, are unblockable and have a huge radius. Illusions, again, smart stuff. Making quick work of his meter with a meter burn roll to put the entire stage at his back as he tries to put the space between himself and Theo, who finally gets in and stays in after about 20 seconds of chasing. Hey, chase him down. You will catch him eventually. He does run out of options, but, you know, Illusion's so good at managing his meter, using those meter burn rolls at just the perfect time. And it looks like he's holding on to the super. He wants to get in super territory, or he could possibly connect and then just go straight into chipping him out with zoning. All right, well, the Ice Arrow is active. He's looking for a combo in this situation instead of the raw damage that he's gotten so far from the fire arrows. And here is the super right on point. Miguel, one to the... Oh, it's on, baby. I hope you can read. Oh, yes, it's definitely on right here. And check out this foot dive from Green Arrow. It is not enough, though. And Theo connects with the with the uh, teleport. Unfortunately, doesn't have the meter to make it a combo. And the unblockable barrel. Great reaction from Theo and Illusions. Although... True? No, I'm battle-tested. Okay, we know that she's battle-tested. However, this is a huge comeback he's looking for, and he spins the meter to gain even more damage on the class, and too many teleports there. Illusions is eventually going to avoid one. And now, up a game, he has the advantage in the counterpick situation. Aquaman, he definitely does here, and... and I, I, I feel like it wasn't completely free for Illusions. Theo just kind of, you know, wasn't in the character skin quite as comfortably as he is in, in Superman's or, or even in Aquaman's. Um, you know, he might have been able to progress and learn the matchup, but that doesn't matter. That's that's not here or there. Theo switching to Aquaman. And, uh, you know, I guess he's just trying to, to, to gain that full screen presence here that, that you see in the in the meter burn uh, tentacle strike. Still a good move. It does do, not, doesn't have combo potential like it did before. It did get nerfed, but look, Theo's building so much meter. Huge meter uh, advantage right here. Yeah, you talk about the nerfs of Tentacle Strike. However, anywhere on the screen, that's a chunk of damage. 200 is nothing to shake at. And it checks your opponent either way. Fantastic chip, safe from that range as Illusions makes its way in. Now, 
We did see him take out Dragon's Aquaman earlier. And the, with the momentum he's riding, this wave of confidence should be enough to keep Illusions in the driver's seat. But Theo, again, so much poise. And Aquaman being basically in his lifeblood as he shows you the bane of his existence. Great escape on the interactable. And another interruption, another trident rush, and Illusions down the lifeblood. You yeah, know, you definitely want to challenge uh, Green Arrow every time you block that uh, spinning bow. When he does meter burner, there is a gap there. You just need a fast normal to, to get through it. And great timing because if you eat the launcher, Illusions or any Green Arrow player of decent skill is going to find that combination really easy to follow up with. Regret not taking me seriously? Does it look like it? Ooh. And Arthur Curry, uh, a pretty savage man tonight with his clash quote, so angry. Theo getting that meter for Ursula from full screen and then rolling in. He doesn't want to let go of Illusions. He wants to finish this now. He doesn't want to give him the room or the options to make this comeback. And Illusions is starting to do it. Yeah, can we talk about that reaction from Illusions? Theo jumped back and on reaction, Illusions jumped back and let the arrow fly. It's just fantastic stuff. But again, Theo making quick work of that uh, tentacle strike. Oh, and Theo a little mistiming there. Before he did beat it clean, he might have not been frame perfect right then and there. And Illusion just kind of lives to see another day because of it. And this is the smart stuff from Theo camping out the corner looking for that interactable no clash available to Illusion to jump back for the escape and here's the launcher. This could be the start of something special. However, Theo oh, access the to the clash. Dyna seems to think so. Okay, so he said that he's the true Aquaman. Not sure anyone ever in the history of ever has contested that, but you know, life is hard, and then you die as Illusions is looking to mix. And great avoidance, but Theo so poised. You can only jump so much before you land or get caught on the way up from that tentacle strike. And Theo, as always, calm, cool, collected. Trident at hand. And Illusions with the head shake now. Maybe a little a crack in the armor? A head shake because I was looking over at the other screen. Uh, we went to random stage and he again got Fortress of Solitude. Illusions not happy with it. The chances to land on the same screen. Wrong time for jokes, Ali. That's all I got. Begin. This is true. all I got. Green Arrow definitely has a quiver full of arrow jokes. And Aquaman, who is clearly a bit too serious for casual or competitive play, wants to kill everybody. And Theo opens up with the Trident Rush. Down one into the background bounce. And, I mean, 400 damage for no bar? I'll that, take it. That's a lot of damage. Hey, Aquaman can still do that damage, but that background bounce has to be available. Maybe that's what Illusions was looking for in the, in the stage switch. Looking for a stage that doesn't give him access to a Same battle. side with the mix-up there from that air to ground arrow coming from Illusions. Taking the chip damage now. Wants to stay on this right side of the screen and keep Theo away from that pillar of glass that allows him to drop an unblockable, continuous, and unlimited. And a great block there by, by uh, Illusions, knowing that that icicle is going to come down after that drape was pulled by Aquaman. Just like it is from any other power character. And there's and a, a Trident Rush. Yeah. yeah, Illusions waiting for Aquaman to spin his bar meter before spinning his on the push block. And right there, Illusions had no meter to push block, so he decided to stop letting Aquaman build meter, took the hit on purpose uh, to build a little bit more for himself. You right. know, it was pretty much a lose-lose situation there. He just wanted to take the lesser of two evils. And Theo, perfectly content with these meter burn ten tentacle strikes, doesn't need a full combo damage. It all adds up, and right now, although Illusions has Aquaman in the corner, he is in big time trouble and immediately switches positions. Time for it to rain arrows. By Neptune, I won't yield. <laughs> Not nice. bad that time. That was more defensive than angry from Aquaman, so I'll give him a little bit of respect on his class, folks. Oh, and commits to the background bounce off of that long-reaching overhead. 445 damage raw. Illusions in big-time trouble here. Trying to get Theo to crack there, and he knew he was going straight for the background bounce. He decided to interrupt. You fight like the first Stolly. Yeah, but I'm winning here. How does he know he's winning here? How does he know? Okay. So, camping the background bounce is Theo because he knows it's so much combo potential, especially with this nerfed Aquaman. Oh, and Pelucius using that arrow shot to cut his approach short. Didn't want to get clipped out of the air by the overhead from the back two. And the juggle on the Trident Rush. Enough to kill Illusions, and now a man who was once giving you a wink and a smile has a straight look on his face, hand on his chin, and thinking 
about this clutch character selection as he will be locked in to the decision he makes here. He will be locked in here, but Theo can rely on Superman. And I feel like Theo definitely knows this fight a lot. A lot of people put Black, uh, Batman and Black Adam. And uh, Illusion's finally getting off of the Fortress of Solitude. Yeah, Illusion's definitely formidable with about half of the cast, maybe even more. Who knows what characters he's pocketing in his spare time, but he's going to go with Black Adam. This is it. Do or die on Brainiac's ship. And this time they didn't let the intros rock Illusion's means business. Let's see who gets this first hit in Ward Meter. Now, you can't get that first hit meter with Black Adam straight, but you can get it with Aquaman's forward too. All right, getting the crossover dive kick to punish the whip throw. Didn't have the meter to get a full combo, but again, it all adds up. Hit advantage, positioning, and damage all at the same time as Theo challenges what he knew was going to be a forward one from Illusion. You know, when you're fighting Black Adam, you, you usually your go-to buttons in the neutral are anything down one, down two, anything to duck that forward advancing one. Yeah, we could talk about that great adjustment from Illusions. He got the punish on the normal Trident Rush from Theo. Theo traded up so he wouldn't be launched, so instead he continued his combo string and ended with the EX Low Lightning. Now, during Aquaman's trait being active, although he slips out of the combo, he takes the full damage of every move that connects. Yeah, even the ones that he blocks. Yes. So it's not just regular chip damage, it's going full damage. Wow. And using the interactables is Illusions. And the down two fantastic anti-air move from Black Adam as he summons a bolt of lightning from the gods behind. Yeah, Illusion just kind of being really patient, waiting for Theo to hang himself. And Theo ties it all up with the meter burn tentacle strike from full screen. Yeah, hanging Illusions his tournament hopes into balance. No whiff punish here. However, both men shown a lot of respect, a lot of ground game here, a lot of back and forth, and not too many high-risk maneuvers. Theo connecting with that forward two, keeping Illusions in the corner, and he, you best believe he's going to be meter burning this Trident Rush to try to get as much ship as possible. The down two canceled the Trident Rush. And a whiff dive kick there. You saw the jump back boot from Illusions. He was looking to punish. Taking his time, trading blows now, sweeps the leg. Oh, and the wake up goes unpunished. Very unlike Theo, but here we go. Trying to go for that full damage as you it's put first before. And what a fantastic adaptation from Theo. He knew that Illusions would try to continue that block strength and went down. Uh, Black Adam goes for his down one poke into any specials. There is a gap in which you can interrupt, and Theo baited Illusions into it. Unbelievable. Turning the tables in his favor with defensive positioning. Theo, such a smart player. All right, right, chipping him out, putting him closer to the corner, and Illusions decides to challenge with that down one. It's a great move, very fast. And that was so slick, using that back two overhead, and the cross of Theo, unable to clash, had two bars of meter at his disposal. You hate to die with resources, but you know Superman is coming back. Here comes the pick. Game five. Black Adam versus Superman. Reminiscent of the good old days. Definitely, but I think Illusion's going into this fifth game. He's at a slight disadvantage. This isn't his true main, and we know this is Theo's true main. You're weak, despite your power. I've heard this speech before. Ooh. This time, it will be your last. Oh. 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 Okay, Black Adam telling Theo this is his last shot in tournament and in the cannon, but Theo is Superman right now. Boltman, immense power, looking to meet Sonic Fox in the Losers final, and Illusions with that 4-1. Doesn't spend the bar. Doesn't spend the bar, but does get it. But and Theo spends it, make it two meters. Looking for the full combo conversion, but a little too early. The 50-50 special jump punch into that overhead dive bomb. What side did it hit on? Doesn't matter, it was the right side as Illusions is down a huge chunk of health. Oh, and the sweeping laser does stop the, the, that option from Illusions to go for the full screen projectile. Oh, and the dive kick, the whiff punish him going the other way. Illusions, what a great combo here. Has him in the corner. What's he going to do? Goes for the overhead. Oh, and no combo there. The down one into the black magic. I'm sure Illusions was looking for the trait cancel, but he did not have trait active at his disposal. Oh, that shimmy there by Theo. Won't stop me. And that instant class was the smartest thing Illusions has done in a long time. Superman was looking at 400 damage into a setup. Once again, last chance 
both men again so much respect there's the air to air dive kick this should be enough to kill with the trait and of course why not in a 2-2 situation a classic match let's take it down to the last life bar both men about even on health about even on meter oh, almost gets a whip punish there Theo a little too slow scary stuff a voice the lasers and look Theo baiting out the air to air dive kick so smart and challenges the frames. Illusions has to eat the entirety of this combo. And Theo knows that, goes for the throw, resets him, and now he is still in forward two range here. Bates a wake up, this is all over for Illusions. He's probably down to one more guess. This is gonna hurt. Terrible decision there, risked it all. And the what a read, a wake up jump. The riskiest of reads as Illusions is now in control. Theo has access to the meter and oh no, a combo drop, a second chance at life. You know what this means, Miguel. Oh, it means tired. Superman has got his license. He's learned how to drive and the test out the box going to Red Hood. Theo with Supergirl. Man, I mean, it works out. We definitely know they have characters to play. The alternates are in. No Black Canary, no Captain Cold. Can we call any of Sonic Fox's characters alternates? I mean, uh, it's so hard to really pin down his main. This is true. <laughs> this is absolutely true. You know, he showed up to CEO with Darkseid. No one saw that coming. And look at this great intro by Red Hood. Easy to be cynical, isn't it? It is when you've seen what I've seen. Sounds like you also make excuses. Begin. Ooh, and instantly challenging his morals is Supergirl. She hurts in every way possible. Unbelievable. The neutral jump won by Sonic Fox, knocking Theo out of the sky and continuing his pressure, getting him that first bar. And Theo finds himself in the corner. He can use that bumper car, but decides to go for the freeze breath instead. Hit Sonic Fox, putting him into the center of the screen on the Joker's playground. That mine is out, and for those of you who don't know, those mines aren't unblockable, they just hit low. But Sonic Fox wants to go in there, continue the pressure, and extends the combo with that meter burn mine. The jumps off and the great teleport from Theo to avoid the explosion on that interactable Red Hood, an interactable monster of a setup character. And he wants to throw these bombs, blow your life into smithereens, and reset you with damage that leads into the corner where he really gets going. And Red Hood, such a great mobile character. It's really hard to pin this character down on Wake Up. He's got the lunch towards you. He's got the lunch away, and he can meter burn it for overhead shots. It's so annoying and tough to deal with, especially at the hands of Sonic Fox. And Sonic oh. trying to challenge after that meter burn breath, but Theo chasing him down with the down one going under that high attack as he avoids the unblockable barrel with an easy jump laser. Into the corner we go. Sonic Fox doing a great job of blocking, and he does get out of there, puts Theo towards the corner. Let's see if Theo's gonna go for those barrels. He does have a meter, two meter burn the interactable. No, he goes for a simple back throw, turning the, turning the tides on Sonic Fox. And now he has all this real estate to work with. And that traded quick shot from Sonic, mixing up the zoning, using those Gotham stars, the mines, and that dive forward and backwards to try to stay evasive. However, Theo, getting the hits and the one making the bulk of the damage here with the full combos of his own. And Sonic Fox is trying to get into that lunge rain in order to punish Theo for, for going for the air lasers. Wow! The mine connects the conversion! What a fantastic combo there. Sequence from Theo and now uh, from Sonic Fox and now in trouble. Yeah, he just teleports it. You knew it was gonna happen. Huge mistake from Theo. Doesn't understand how he let that one get away from him as he looks back into the skies closes his eyes, and I'm going to stop before that becomes bars. I mean, Theo, Theo knew he made a mistake. He's going to adapt. You know, he's here. He's not going to be content with third place. Theo wants a win. He is overdue for a win. And he wants to get his revenge on Tamiji in Grand Finals. Oh, the down three. Such a great option by Supergirl. Such great range. Knocking him down, leaving him vulnerable to a mix-up on wake-up. And jumping in, needs him with the air-to-air. -air. Easy punish for Theo to the corner we go. But no, he would not oppress him. He backs off instead. Theo looking to play the space game. Yeah, he's, he's trying to back. Oh, he backdashes through the mine. Right now, Theo's just trying to hold on to this life lead, trying to make Sonic Fox hang himself, forcing him to come to him. Here we go, the conversion. Big boot at the end, and the wake up from Theo. Very risky stuff there. Sonic Fox is going to look for an opening for that interactable, but Theo 
Keeping him on his toes, not allowing him to do anything. Air to air combo now. Hard knockdown into the follow up. What's it gonna be? Whiffs a normal and Theo wakes up with the sweep. We have seen this such a great option for Zubergirl. It lowers her hurt box and, and, and hits you so quickly. And teleports away for the chase down. No punish on the lunge, but Sonic finding it hard to chase Theo down. Supergirl's mobility, air dashing, teleporting, ducking those quick shots. Sonic and Box looking for the lunge, getting a little too frisky there, and Theo in control. The interactable's in play, he's gonna check it, but Sonic Box with the delay wake up, such smart stuff. Yeah, and I think Theo's perfectly fine with that. Working on the magic pixel, why not take the time to remove the unblockables to prevent yourself from being set up later. Now, that meter burn, eye laser trait, huge chunk of damage on chip, but on hit, even better. As Theo whittling Red Hood down piece by piece with laser traits, not looking for the combos. Meter burn mine to extend it. Sonic Fox with a great hit confirmed there, knowing it was going to punish, trying to knock Theo into the corner. However, Theo's on a full stick of butter here. Super is accessible. As soon as he gets one hit, that's all he needs to do is hit two buttons and get the Super to connect. Yeah, and that may tell you a little bit about how Theo's gameplay is going. I think it was a huge mistake. He goes for the breath and doesn't meet a burner to stay safe. Sonic then takes advantage, clearly looking for a way to look for a Super that is the fastest in the game at five frames. But the tendency and the decision to hold on to that meter cost him his life as Sonic Fox didn't give him a chance to clash in the last 500 hit points. Begin. Yeah, Sonic Fox really blew through that super territory without ever looking back. He just wanted the win right there. Oh, and the mine recovers quickly enough to, to block that, that uh, teleport from Supergirl and to successfully punish. Here we go. The unblockable setups, the very fair stuff. And now the, uh, Sonic on the offensive to open this set and just like that easy conversion Theo in trouble Theo just wants nothing to do with those mines he doesn't even want to block them because he knows that that red hood is at such great frame advantage there I don't want to hurt you I'm actually disappointed and red hood wants nothing but a battle the man who is claiming to be vengeance punishing Theo on that wake up DP has a lot of ground to cover and Sonic Fox seemingly rolling plus frames on that string there, blowing up that grenade. Oh, somehow that back three connect. We need to see a replay of that. How did that hitbox go to the other side? And the high, low, very tough to block setup there. Theo taking advantage of the gap of Sonic trying to get away with that leaderless mind. However, Although he's only down to his last 200 points, not giving up. He's going to push the offensive. Sonic Fox escaping with that roll. And this is it. Chip territory. Wait a minute here. Don't count Theo out. Can he do this? Only a real master can make a comeback like this on a player like Sonic Fox. No clash left. No options left. He's got no meter. He's got nothing. He goes for it. Oh, looking for the parry. Sonic Fox getting a little flashy. Diving around and eventually gets the connection. There is the patented Get in there. Finals. All right, this is it. Grand Finals. Summer Jam 11. Justice Pro Series. Sonic Fox. Ready to get up close and personal? Mm. Not much of a cat. We're not making friends, then. Begin. Well, clearly Cold has a thing for Poison Ivy, so cats don't do it for the young man with the parka. But Samish doesn't care. He is here for pure business as he gets the first combo taking it to the corner and Sonic Fox trying to bait out a throw tech a little shimmy action but Samish not falling for the bait Sonic Fox poking there and he's setting up camp right here he's got this wall now he can cat hop uh, he can hop over that little shard of ice on the ground but he, he's going to be risking a lot of stuff so Samish completely content with taking a back seat here letting Sonic Fox set up here look at all this damage is he going to freeze the Sonic Fox it's keeping him here up. Wow, and allows Samish to escape. That setup was entirely dirty, but Samish not giving up. Able to backdash his way out at the end, but Sonic Fox is going to recharge the gun and uh, a beautiful step kick into the ice. Not sure if that's what Samish was looking for, but we take those at the first life bar dwindles in an icy death. Sonic Fox isn't losers. He cannot leave anything. He can't leave anything on the table. He's got to take every advantage that he can over each mistake that Samish throws at him. Here comes the snow globe. Is she gonna? No! Usually Samij goes straight for the backdash out of there, and Sonic Fox thought, okay, I'm fine because he's just gonna backdash out of here, and he got hit by the whip. 
Oh, and the whiff punish on that meter burn back three. Sabish getting a little greedy, trying to fight Sonic out of that snow globe. But instead, the whip trip now back on the offensive. Fantastic conversion from the young kid from Noble. Able to recognize that was an anti-air collision and finishes it off. What? Stop it. Did he just? Stop it. He did, he did that just happen? No, 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 no. Yes. No, 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 no. This man did not meter burn back three bounce cancel his jump attack from the air yes you can if you buffer that in the air it will happen as soon as you land on the ground this and kid so is too smart he knew he's he smart. knew that armor was going to go through that low attack that's on the ice puddle samish is actually on the next level spinning two bars to get that going a little bit out of the range for that whip slap there he and once again. again yo who is this yo why is this kid so godlike only in your dreams and now, did he learn this on the fly? Because he wasn't doing this the last set. He didn't do it at all. He had every opportunity to do it. I don't know if someone kind of phoned in some secret tech to Samiz. Hey, good thing you won against Sonic Fox, but here's another option that you have. Yeah, absolutely not. Samiz plays so much. This kid has so much knowledge of the game. I'm not surprised in the slightest that he is this good, but unfortunately his spacing a little bit behind his intellect in that situation as he walks into his death. Sonic Fox up one game. However, Samiz does have an entire set to throw away, for lack of a better turn, as he's earned the right to be reset, but... The Poison Ivy pick on his mind right now. How will he respond in this clutch situation? Poison Ivy. There we go. Samiz selected Poison Ivy, keeping the full screen presence. The Vines are going to hold down Captain Cold, not give him the room that Sonic Fox wants. So you're going to see a big change of pace here. Sonic Fox is going to be the aggressor. He's going to go in because he knows at full screen he's just going to lose. Backing up, waiting for this trade to time over, and Samij taking full advantage of Sonic Fox, not sitting still. Good blocks here by Sonic Fox. Here's his chance to stop, and the trait is gone. No longer summoned. Dash is up, using Divine Joe with that 4-3, advancing in Poison Ivy. The longest range 4-3 in the game, able to control the space and she can move either forwards or backwards. Smart stuff there. I like the idea with the meter burn back three to armor through the icicle setup, but Sonic Fox keeping a steady defensive pace. Oh, trying to put up the wall, but the vine does get under it. Samiz slowed down a little bit there, but the back three was fast enough to punish Sonic Fox. Unfortunately, he couldn't continue the combo. But so here he is, just a few more block vines. Should be enough to chip it out. Sonic Fox knows staying on the ground is not an option, so he tries to jump out, but he does get it. Now you see both of these men trying to camp around this globe. That jumping interactable for gadget characters is unblockable, and it homes at about half the distance away from said uh, whatever you call Brainiac's little capture globes. I don't have it on my head right now, but... And it respawns right there. Sonic Fox displayed for us, almost knowing exactly when it was coming back. Like he had a little timer in his head. Yeah, that timer about four seconds or four. <laughs> As Samish pulls the screen away, the smart stuff, trying to stay back, and Sonic Fox again going Design back to his roots. When you have an unblockable at your disposal, why not abuse it? I mean, in hindsight, the right decision there for Samij would be to probably meter burn roll in there, avoid the interactable, and punish Sonic Fox while he's still in the air. Samij still in a very good spot here. Nice trade now. Getting the knockdown from the vine drill. Oh, he's going to have a hard time escaping now. Getting in the block stun of those trade shots. Now, though, um, Poison Ivy's backdash isn't as great as Catwoman. It's still an option to get out of that globe. And puts up the EX Ice Ball. If he stands in that, he will take damage over time. And because it is Peter Burnt version, he can and will freeze if he's in it for too long. And the punish of the down shoe. Join the rogues. That well's been poisoned. And Sonic Fox using two bars, getting 25% back for his resources. And Samij building up some bar of his own, but Sonic Fox still has enough to match it. So if Samij does get the clash going, he's not going to have enough to beat Sonic Fox in the meter game. So he's just got to close this out right now. Clash is not an option here. Yeah, and Samij very happy with taking these trades, but the anti-air drill there. Chip damage will do it. Here comes Nice Shade, and this should be enough. And yes, who needs help when you have the greatest protection ever? You can just sit there. Dead shot. All right, quick replay as we get into it now. The smart stuff from Samiz. It's a second look at this 
Meter burn back three, cancel armoring instantly. The frame she touches the ground to not be frozen. Begin. Sending Sonic Fox on a transition. Beautiful stuff. And we come back to a counter pick. Dead shot here to ruin the day of all the green everywhere. Bullets fly. They're a bit stronger than the drills Ivy has at her disposal. But Sabi's still in control here. Still in control because he can meter burn the, uh, the, the, the drills coming from the ground and he can just meet him with another regular one or meet burn another one if he's got the bar to spend it. And Sonic Fox, great use of that interactable, the unblockable stuff all over the Joker's playground. So smart, you really gotta know your stages in this game. That forward three reaches so far, it's like almost full screen. And Kiss is dead shot through the mask, enough to poison him, poison Ivy with the hot stuff there. I wanted to kiss at one point in time, but I'm not sure anymore as my views on life have been shifted. This ravenous woman here, sending Nightshade to do the dirty work, combos into the Vine Drills full screen, and Samiz fighting back to back. Not quite sure how bad of a matchup it feels, but we're gonna trade blows. And Deadshot is, does find himself in the corner, and he's trying to buy some real estate in, trying to meet Poison Ivy. Now, check out the meter deficit here. Samiz needs to find answers. And the great read on the neutral jump attack, however, went for the jumping heavy, which launches opponents. Not able to get the continuation on the combo, but now Sonic Fox working a combo of his own challenges in between the pokes is Samish, and now we're slugging it out. Who cares about zoning when we're both up close and personal in each other's faces? And right now, Samish is looking for a continue for a successful hit so he can so he can safely summon his trait. Sonic Fox not giving it to him, giving him a nice throw, stabbing him in the gut, and shooting him full screen, completely away from him. And no chance to clash for Samish, and the down two coming out fast enough to trade with the air attack. However, Sonic, that trade, enough to kill Samish and eliminate his life bar. One more game away from a reset. Fighters approaching Atlantis. Now this is very interesting because Sonic Fox will get last pick. If Samiz does defeat his dead shot, Sonic Fox is free to go to the character select screen and, and pick whoever he wants. While Samiz is locked down on Catwoman. Straight whip there, nice whip, trip of the legs. Catching Sonic Fox trying to walk back, plus frames from the cartwheel, but of course, the Sonic. challenge. Sonic Fox was ready to challenge and what a successful challenge there. Getting him all this momentum here keeping Catwoman at full screen. Now Sonic Fox opting to go for the green trait. When those connect, those do slowly drain his opponent's meter. Here's the jump in now. Priority there, Sonic Fox a little late with the anti-air attempt. Now, carry to the corner for his troubles to jump back, whip a little too high as that hitbox re uh, region has been adjusted. Catwoman needed to be a little bit deeper. And now, careful with these blue bullets. These blue bullets, when they connect, they will send. Catwoman at full screen. Very, very annoying uh, trait aspect there. And the whip trip again at max range. Great spacing from Samish. And Sonic Fox continually challenging Samish after plus frames. And the shimmy right there. How about that challenge? You take that bullet and you, you know where to shove it. As Samish scratches through that mask, trying to fight his way closer. But Sonic Fox advancing. Yeah, no, he's tired of zoning. He's, he's tired of eating those whips over and over again, but he's being the aggressor. And Samiz taking complete advantage of it with the meter burn back three. That's basically what Catwoman wants you to do. She wants you to get overzealous. She wants you to try to take advantage of frame traps just so she can meter burn back three through them. And now Samiz getting the job done now with those down one pokes after his plus frames, forcing Sonic to respect his mix-ups and Oki up close. The throw tech by Sonic Fox. Don't test this boy's reactions. Oh, he went for the dirty stuff there. Looking for that cross up on that cat dash. However, Sonic Fox simply delays his wake up to avoid it. Punish with the throw. No, not a punish. Sonic Fox able to tech. How about a kiss? Kiss this, Floyd. And what's up with all the men trying to get kisses from the women that Sabish plays, man? It's nothing but disrespect. That's all it is. Nothing but disrespect. Underestimating your opponent. Oh, and the whiff punish by Sonic Fox, and here's a clash. You were a skilled killer. Why rush the climax? Look at, see that shot? You're so forward, my man. You want to take this woman out first? You, you know, you want to slow down? No, you don't. And this is why you died. 
Jump in attempt. Blocks the staggers now. Commits to the trade chip damage territory. What's it going to be? Sonic Fox jumping in. Whiffs the back three. Why these clutch situations? Playing with the hearts and souls of everybody. Does Sonic Fox have enough? He does not spend the meat on the combo, but instead looking for the chip damage. Evades the trick shot, and that time punishes the dash in with a second trick shot. Reset of the bracket. Unfortunately for Samiz, he got that combo at the end. He didn't have the meter to meter burn the cat dash. That would have been over. It would have been done. And take a look at Sonic Fox. That man is in his thoughts. He needs a word, needs a second. Looking back to the crowd, checking from his teammates. He's got the reset, but now in a precarious situation. You have to do it once again. Now, even sets between both of these men, they both have a bunch of characters. Not sure if momentum is going to mean anything here. Freedom to choose their characters over again, and Samish is going to stick with his main. Yeah, both players, even though Sonic Fox just won, both players are free to change their characters, and that's only because this is a whole new set. Yes. All right, game one, the reset of grand finals. It all ends here. Captain Cold against Catwoman. First hit for Samish. Anti-air with that instant jump one. Samij puts Sonic Fox in the corner. Sonic Fox uses that interactable get out. Let's see how Samij adapts to it, and let's see if he anticipates it. Because it's, it's really a great tool for gadget characters to just get out of there. The corner is not where you want to be against anyone. An excellent challenge from Samij there with the meter burn back three to go through Sonic Fox's string and using the corner interactable to escape with that dive kick. Playing the patient game once more. Sonic not able to build any of that trait. Looking to advance that gun to the level two. However, Samish staying right within the range. That doesn't allow him to shoot, but puts up the ice wall. What's up? You are not welcome in this house, sir. Captain Cole Neither. with the denial. And Sonic Fox making great usage of that one bar meter. And look at Samish getting over that giant wall. That very quick rising hitbox of Captain Cold crossing him up and taking that first bar. And challenging is Sonic uh, Samiz with that cat dash. Not sure about the combo there. Sonic kicks him with the wall out of the snow globe, which would have been a guaranteed freeze. However, when you can recharge the gun and get another one right back to back, no worries in that situation. And right now, Samiz is dancing in and outside of the globe because once you go outside of the globe, that freezer timing does reset. As you can see, Catwoman's turn, body turned to ice in this situation. After a dominating sequence from Catwoman, who took Sonic Fox life bar about 30 seconds ago, the I mean, patience and poise. Again, he goes for that cat hop over the ice puddle, and Sonic Fox ready to punish him for it. There's no way in hell that Samish is going to go for that move again. Very, very risky stuff. Chucking all three boxes, trying to get any damage on the board that he can. Samij has full bar right now. Big time trouble now as he gets closer to the corner. Doesn't really have the resources or the space to escape. I'm just toying with you. Here comes a blizzard of pain. Captain Cold clearly not a fan of the games. Wonder Woman, uh, Wonder Woman. Catwoman is playing with him. It, it, all these strong women just toying with the men, you know, it triggers me. It makes me feel a type of way, which is why I, it's just... Ah! I'm sure it makes you feel a certain type of way. <laughs> to me, getting that knockdown with the whip. Trying to stay on top of Sonic Fox, and Sonic Fox opting to go to the delay wake up, kind of throwing off Samija's timing. You know, this is the first time <laughs> I'm seeing this, this this full ice wall here. Sonic Fox, Samij not waiting it out. I feel like he really had no reason to go in. And punished there on the grab that attempt. Cold feet. I've killed mice braver than you. Mm. And Samij holding on to that one bar because he knows that it cost him the set last time. He knows that he needs that one bar to close it out in, in the meter burn cat dash because once you get a hit, you can easily convert it if you have it. And looking for another throw bait is Samij, but instead uses that back to chip damage territory. There's the low whip trip, Sonic Fox blocking it all. Wow, that was really close with the evasion. The raw jump in the cancel this time. Going down to the last hit and the throw there. Now, had Sonic Fox teched it or not, it did not matter. In NRS games, the initial grab does damage, and Sonic Fox did not have the health to survive it, so Samiz is able to secure that game up one game to zero in this reset. And the anti-air whip, Sonic a little too close, running into the active frames, huge extended hitbox. 
He's back dashing out of there. Now he does have access to those interactables above his head. He can use them to swing in and jump in on Sonic Fox. I'm surprised Sonic Fox didn't change the stage here. Um, but I guess he was okay and content with having the corner interactables, knowing that Catwoman can't take those away from him. All right, here's a level two up and active again. That snow globe, a huge blue ring of death. As he charges up, this time he's going to get the entirety of the damage deserved. And one more press of the button, getting that level two right back. And perfectly timed there. It looks like it was a clean punish by Samid. That timing is so impeccable there. Very, very difficult thing to do there. And the delay wake up messes up his inputs. Messes up the timing. And Sonic Fox ready to take advantage of it. Sitting back, hiding behind the globe, and charging up his trait. He wants that level two. He's not using level one or level three at all. And again, so much annoyance and disappointment from that snow globe. It puts your entire game plan on hold as you simply have to wait for it to go away or look to escape it. And that whip, that whip is slow enough when he's not in the globe. And Samiz is really, really looking for something he shouldn't be. And look at there. the whip punish there from Sonic Fox now. Staying on the offensive, he's gonna back up Interactable at his disposal. Caught trying to press buttons at negative frames and Samiz right on point with his challenge. Uh, down to such a great tool by, by uh, Captain Cold. Lowers his hurt box so much. It's really hard to stuff it. And now Samiz in big trouble. There's no room for escape, but a jump back in this situation just on the outside. The meter burn roll to escape, jumping out with that interactable and then jumping back into the corner. Jumping back into the corner. He's just, he's got no options left. He's got to get Sonic Fox. He thought he could push him back enough to get out of the globe. And stuffing that wall right there, Samiz, maybe learning something a little bit on the fly in this matchup. Desperately using that, that air tech right there, using his last two bars. And the damage over time from that snow globe. Sonic Fox activates that icy defensive shield as Catwoman is simply killing herself by attacking Cold. And I'm pretty sure Sonic Fox is going to do it again here. Yes, he does. Yeah, and Samiz brings his own death, the ultimate troll move, one way or another. And we see such of those, uh, so many of those in the game. You have Scarecrow's Trait Grass. You have Atrocitus' blood-sucking puddle thing. And then the Captain Cold level of disrespect converted here. Look at this wall. You are not allowed in my house, good sir. No, it's a huge wall right there. I'm surprised that Catwoman's whip does even go through it at all. I mean, that's all she's going to do. The block there, Captain Cold looking for the kiss or some type of intimacy. Catwoman not really about it, but then wants to get all close. No, hold this block. Get out of my life. Get away from me as he puts the ice wall up and denies any chance of her playing these mind games. Samiz switching, using his character select to go to Poison Ivy. And look, Sonic Fox getting very aggressive. He knows that he can't give him any room to breathe. He can't give him room to summon that trait. And he connects with a jump in. This is going to hurt. Frozen going, loading up that trait, putting up that wall, and the fancy display of perfect execution by Sonic Fox. And so disgusting is that setup, that low kick into the death sickle, into the low puddle, low overhead, low butt, in which order? And Sonic Fox is working on a near perfect. There it is. That's the answer in this matchup. You really can't sit back and zone Poison Ivy. Those vines are going to get you, but don't count Samiz out just yet. Meter burn rolling out of there, trying to get a little bit of real estate, trying to buy some space here, and their trade is out. So Captain Cold is locked in. As long as Poison Ivy doesn't get hit, you really just got to wait out that trait. All right, and Samiz found the escape he was looking for. Huge chunk of real estate in between himself and his opponent as Sonic Fox is challenging with the zoning game himself. And Sonic trying his best to chase Samiz down. Instead, staying composed. And that wall, a great defense from Samiz, although he's facing a huge life deficit outside of that first round corner slaughter. He's been in there. So Mage, perfect forward dash there to avoid that overhead icicle that Sonic Fox perfectly placed above his head. All right, there's the bark skin for added defense as long as it's active. Going for the whiff punish, but Sonic Fox with the empty jump, not biting. No setup here. Into the corner, big time trouble for Samij, and we're looking at chip damage. Builds the wall, not once, but twice, to kick Samij down into Deep contemplation mode. Look at that young man. Samiz is down to his last life. He does not have a match to lose. He's got to win two straight Captain over Sonic Cold. Fox. 
Looks like he's going to be going Catwoman. He's thinking about it. I, I feel he had, you know, it, it all comes down to that initial scramble in the in the Captain Cold and, and um, Poison Ivy matchup. <laughs> Sonic Fox just walked into the corner, shoved that gun down his throat, and just mix up after mix up with those overheads, the lows. Catwoman. So here, yeah, here we are in classic FTC fashion, man. If you're going to go down, you go down with the character that got you there in the first place, Samij. Catwoman extraordinaire to the Slaughter Swamp. One last chance to put a damper on Sonic Fox's dreams to win back-to-back -back premiere events. Back to back with Captain Cold, charges it up, continues the combo, not leaving too much damage on the ground. And here we go, a replay of that first round from the last game so far. Sonic pushed him to the corner and went with an onslaught of mix-ups. However, Samish able to fight back now, not giving up much damage besides that initial combo. And here we go, baby, he's in business. There's the back three, the bounce. Cartwheel for the splat. Once again, Sonic Fox not blocking in the wake-up wall. A little bit of invincibility to get Samiz off of him. And look at the great use of that interactable. The alligator using it to bounce off, get out, getting out of the snow globe as quickly as possible. The unblockable stuff here, a little too slow to continue the combo. And there's a whip just outside of range. It's Samiz just outside of range once again on the low whip trip, doing everything, evading. And Catwoman showing off those cat-like reflexes. And the meter burn back three to get through the wall that Sonic Fox has lunged towards him. Samish has turned the tables here. So Can he tie this up? Unbelievable play there in that first round from Samish. This feline attitude. Able to escape using the environment for her movement. And there you go. Cutting it short to evade the entire attempt from Sonic Fox. Here's the hard knockdown. And Samish now turning the title in this set as Sonic Fox freezes. The Iceman cometh. Okay, Cole, we got you. But he wants to slow down Samish's momentum with that freeze. And Cole's got some quotes of his own right there. Doesn't matter. We don't have to go into a clash. And oh. the level two fortunate for Samish gets the connection, so he's able to backdash and escape the icy globe of death unscathed, but a little greedy. Sonic Fox has been punishing that every single time. I don't know why Samij keeps going for it. You just got to know when you're at a loss. You got to count your losses and move on. A little too slow for that jump in. Gets whiff punished with the greatest of ease. However, one bar apiece. Samish is now in, and Sonic Fox does not have access to level two. Now, time to get the offense working. Negative 14 after the nerves from that cartwheel. Sonic Fox ready at the helm with the punish. Here's the throw. Samish down to the wire now. So what does he have left in the tank? Oh, Sonic Fox decides to put those icicles all over himself. If Samij gets near him, it's going to hurt. Even if he's got a combo going in, Sonic Fox. And so experienced with the pop-off there. He is ready to come back. Samij caught in a loop there. He had the punish on that with the entirety of the string, but he knew that he couldn't hit Sonic Fox with the physical attacks. Left himself open and susceptible to that low ice puddle, and Sonic Fox with...